Hello, today we're briefly going to discuss the forces that act on objects that are along an incline. So far when we've looked at problems, we've only looked at problems that are at components of forces or vectors that act in the x or y direction. Today we're going to look at the forces that act on in two dimensions. Okay? And the reason that we do this is to make our lives easier. Okay? And we want to simplify problems as best we can. So we're going to look at how we're going to analyze those forces here. Let's say we have an incline okay, at some angle theta. And we have a box that sits on that ramp. Okay, that's what we call these problems. It's the old box on the ramp problem. Okay? We know a couple forces already that will act on this object. The first one is the force of gravity. Okay, we know that's going to always act straight down to the center of the earth. The second force that you know is the normal force. Okay, so far we've only had been on flat surfaces, so the normal force has always acted straight up. However, because our object, our ramp is on an incline. The perpendicular now falls over here. Okay, so notice that this line is perpendicular to our surface. Okay? Our definition of normal force is the amount of an object's weight that a surface supports perpendicularly. So you'll notice in this case that the surface does not support the entire weight of the object okay, in the perpendicular direction. Therefore, there's going to be some left over. And that leftover force that pulls the object down the incline, we like to call the parallel component of gravity. Okay, notice the dashed line because it's a component force. And we're going to label this as being F, G, parallel. The little lines there represent parallel because that's the component of gravity that's not balanced out by the normal force which then causes the object to go down the ramp. Okay, over here on the side I'm going to list out the equations that we're going to be solving for today. First off is force of gravity. And that of course is just equal to the object's mass times the acceleration due to gravity, the 9.8 meters per second squared. We're going to solve for the normal force. We're going to solve for that parallel force. Okay, and then just as a reminder, remember that our frictional force equation is just mu times the normal force. Okay, so nothing changes. The frictional force equation is still what it's always been. So let's figure out how we, just, how we solve for the normal force and the parallel component of gravity. Okay, if to do that, it's going to take us proving some triangles. Okay, this is the really the only time you need to worry about proving triangles. We don't need to, you know, I'm not going to ask you to ever go through and prove this ever again. All right. So what we have here is we're going to break up our gravity vector into two different vectors. Okay, the red vector we're going to call FG perpendicular. Okay, because it's perpendicular to our surface. And the green one is going to be our FG parallel component. Okay, those are solid lines. However, they should be dashed. I just used them in color so you can see them a little bit better. Okay, so the FG perpendicular represents the component of the gravitational force that acts right in here. Okay, there's where your um, FG perpendicular is. We know from Newton's third law that forces act in pairs. So in this case, we have the FG perpendicular of the object pushing down into the surface. Therefore, the normal force is the equal and opposite. That's what the surface pushes up with to the object. Okay? The FG parallel is, again, what's left over. It's that leftover component of gravity. Now we need to determine how we're going to figure this out. Okay? We know that these are going to be components of gravity, so we're going to have to break up this triangle into its constituent parts, into its components. Okay? If we were to go through and prove the triangles, we would see that this angle right here is also theta. Okay, that angle right there is theta. All right, where FG is the hypotenuse of the triangle, FG per perpendicular is the adjacent side, and FG parallel is the opposite side from our angle theta. All right, so we know before that when we were solving for things that were the adjacent side, we would use the cosine. Okay, so to find our FN, our normal force, we know it's going to be equal and opposite to the FG perpendicular. The normal force for an object on an incline, and only for objects on the incline, is equal to FG times the cosine of the angle theta, where theta is the angle of the incline. Okay, so that's the only time you can use that normal force relationship. Remember, we said before there was no specific equation for normal force. In this case, there is. But don't start using it in every single situation. All right? Notice now that the FG parallel is the opposite side from our angle theta. Okay? 
And then we know that the trig function that relates things to the opposite side is the sine. So to find FG parallel, we're going to say the FG, the weight of the object, times the sine of the angle theta. All right? A couple of ways to remember this. Everyone knows the Ozzy Osbourne song, Crazy Train. Okay? How does Crazy Train start? Of course it starts that way. It starts, I, I, I. So you're going to have I, I, I for the sine. That's how you're going to remember that FG parallels FG sine theta. Okay? For the FG cosine theta, I like to remember that it's no, in O. Okay? So normal force is FG cosine theta for no. FG parallel is I, I, I for FG sine theta. Okay, the other way you can remember it is by thinking of it in terms of alphabetical order. Okay, N comes before P and C comes before S. Okay, so a couple ways for you to remember that. Again, you're never going to be asked to prove that triangle for me. You may need to just memorize those so you can then use them on the test. Okay, so remember FG is equal to MG. The normal force for an object on an incline is equal to FG cosine theta. The parallel component, which pulls it down the ramp, is equal to FG sine of theta. And the frictional force is going to be mu times the normal force. We've seen that before. All right, let's quickly do an example here. I'll give you a second to write that down. So we're going to place a 20 kilogram box on a ramp that has a 37 degree angle. If the coefficient of kinetic friction between the box and the ramp is 0.2, What's the acceleration of the box down the incline? Okay, so now we're going to look at the summation equation because we know the first thing we do is draw a free body diagram. So I'm going to draw the free body diagram of my box. Okay, so here's my box on the ramp. Forces acting on it. Fg parallel. Fn. Okay, in this case there is friction because they tell us that the coefficient of friction is 0.2. Okay, so we know there's friction. So I'm going to draw a friction vector. Okay, remember it's going to act opposite direction of motion. The object is going to slide down the ramp. So in this case, the friction should act up the incline. Okay, so I'm going to draw it right here like I normally do where the surface is. But you could draw it coming off the middle if that's what you prefer to do. Okay, the other force we need to draw is that component force, that FG parallel. So I'm going to draw, ooh, did I mess that up? That's just FG down there. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so now I'm going to draw FG parallel. Give me that dashed line right here. Okay, so there's your FG parallel. All right, sorry about that mistake before. Now we're going to simply list out things that we've done before. Okay, so we're going to say FG equals MG. So you're going to say the mass of the, of the box, which is 20 kilograms, times the 9.8 meters per second squared, which gives you a weight of 196 newtons. Okay, that's the weight of the object. Now we're going to start doing our normal force and our FG parallel. So Fn equals Fg times the cosine in this case of 37 degrees. Fg is 196 newtons times the cosine of 37. The cosine of 37 is about 0.8. We'll go ahead and plug in our calculator just to make sure we get an exact value. And we get 156.5 newtons for our normal force. We're going to do the same thing now for our Fg parallel. And we're going to say Fg times the cos or times the sine, excuse me, of 37. The sine of 37 is roughly 0 0.6. So we're gonna say 196 newtons times the sine of 37. And we get 118.0 newtons, if I round it off a little bit. Okay? Now we need to find our frictional force. So FF equals mu times the normal force. Our mu value is 0.2. Our normal force, which we found up here, 156.5. We're going to plug that in down here. So we get that the frictional force is 31.3 newtons. Okay? So we have our free body diagram, we have our values that we've solved for. Now we need to look at doing a summation equation. All right? and here's the key to doing summation equations for objects on an incline. Okay, I'm going to slide this up so you hopefully have a lot written down. 
When you look at objects on an incline, you are only worried about the forces that act along the incline. Okay? So you're going to look simply at these forces acting along the incline. All right? There's only three possible choices. FG parallel, FF, and then if there's a, an applied force pushing it up or pulling it down the incline. Okay? So those are the only three options. You're not going to have FG, FN, or FG perpendicular in any of your summation equations. Okay? So let me repeat that again. The only forces you put into the summation equation are going to be those that act along the incline. Okay, so I'm going to write out what our summation equation is. And it's going to be the sum of the forces that act along the incline. That's why FG and the sum of the forces parallel. Okay? You're going to look at the forces acting along the incline in this case. We have FG parallel and we have FF. Okay? They are in opposite directions. So when you add them up, you have to have opposite signs. So we're going to say FG parallel minus FF. And because it does not mention anything about the object being at rest or moving at a constant speed, we know that's going to be set equal to MA. Okay? So FG parallel minus FF equals MA. Now we can plug in our values. We said that FG parallel was 118 newtons. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to plug it in for my FG parallel. 118.0 newtons. My FF, 31.3 newtons. Minus 31.3 newtons equals MA. M is 20 kilograms. So now we have to solve for the acceleration. So we're going to take our calculators. We're going to say 118 minus 31.3. Divide that by 20. And we get the acceleration due to gravity down the incline of our object is 4.34 meters per second squared. Okay? If you go through those steps of still drawing free body diagrams, still making summation equations, and remember for inclines, the only forces you have on the summation are those that act along the incline. Your options are FG parallel, FF, and FA. Okay, those are the only forces you'll have along your incline. So please don't get going crazy trying to put in normal forces and gravitational forces into your summation. Make it easy on yourself. Follow the guidelines you've been provided, and you'll have no problem with these kind of questions. Thanks!